Hello and welcome. Week 10, problem 1. Hope the exam went well. Hope you guys succeeded greatly. 1 dominated. Alright, first problem. A seismograph, a seismograph station receives S and P waves from an earthquake. Separated in time by 20 seconds, assume the waves have traveled over the same path at speeds of 4.5 kilometers per second and 7.5 kilometers per second. Find the distance from the seismograph to the focus of the quake. All right, okay, so I don't actually know what to do here, but I'm gonna start by drawing a picture because that's pretty much my default answer whenever I don't know what's going on in life. So we have an earthquake right here, we have a seismograph station right here. So we have two sets of waves. One wave travels this far, it's an S wave. One wave travels this far, it's a P wave. Interesting side bit, P and S waves are actually pretty cool. So P waves, oh, I think they're called longitudinal or compression waves because basically they're uh, they're basically compression like a slinky so you, you know you have a the P wave would look kind of like this and that little compression area would move along and then an S wave or a shear wave I think it's called a transverse wave basically it's like this you have a piece of rope mm -hmm. I guess it depends on how I'm gonna say it like this there we go it moves along that way you take a rope and you go whoosh and it zips along. Um, they're actually kind of cool. Um, interesting tidbit. So you have like normal earthquakes, we have like two faults, and they go clink like that with earth tectonic plates and such. You also have earthquakes from uh, nuclear weapons. That's the one the way they can detect underground nuclear weapon det testing. Um, you guys totally don't care about this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Maybe if you're at like a geology party, you can you know talk about you know PNS waves. We're like, oh, you're so smart. Anyway, so nuclear weapons, when they test them, they have a strong uh, P wave because it's all compressional, just bloop, universal. Uh, universal. Uniform. There's a uniform, more or less spherical explosion. Where when you have an earthquake, it's a lot of it has to do with the uh, tectonic plates moving in different directions, which causes a shear waves. So they can detect nuclear weapons detonations underground because it has a lot of P and very little S. Mm -hmm. eh? Okay, on to things important in life. So, so we have S traveling, we have P traveling, and we know that there is a difference between these two of 20 seconds. Right? So, hmm. So I'm going to start by writing up. So I know we, we know we have velocity, distance, and time. So I'm going to start by writing up V equals D over T. I know velocity is distance over time because my car goes in miles per hour. Mm -hmm. That's dimensional analysis. All right. So let's see here. We know the distances for both of them are going to be the same. Yeah, we do. So I'm going to say distance s, the distance s traveled, is velocity of s times time s. Distance p which is the primary way, the velocity p times time p. We also know that the wave from ts took 20 seconds longer to get there. So we know that ts equals tp plus 20. Bam! We also know, this is just straight math, minimal understanding. ds, the distance that s travels is the same that, that the distance that p traveled. Okay, so now we can set these guys e equal to each other, and I'm going to substitute in the um, time uh, time s in terms of in time in terms of time p. So I'm going to say that velocity s times t p plus twenty. This is all in seconds. Equals velocity p times t p. Okay, and we're looking for time p. Nope, I'm not going to make that an equals. I'm going to make that an arrow to say that they're related, but I'm not actually going to specify the relationship. <laughs> kind of like on uh, Facebook, we're like, well, it's complicated. <laughs> I don't want to explain it, and it's more convenient for me if I don't. 20s equals VPTP. Okay, is that true? Mostly true. Okay, now we get all the TP on one side. Eh, eh, probably some dirty, dirty joke there. I'll think of it later and tell you. 
FPS. Nope. So, move this guy over there. Factor out the TP. And now equal 20. I, hate, I have the S there, but I can just get rid of it. I just mean 20. There we go. So the total time for P is 20 divided by VP minus VS. Hmm, that seemed reasonably easy. Did I do that right? That seemed almost too easy. VP plus 20. 20 VS. Did I drop the VS? I think I dropped the VS. That's what happens when I get carried away. VSTP, check. VS20, check. Equals VPTP, VPTP minus VPVS. Yeah, okay. Equals 20 VS. And then the VS should be down here. Okay. Now we know the velocity of the secondary waves. Uh, I like to think of them as shear waves. Because shear is because oh, it's terrible again. I'm terrible at driving. There we go. I'll draw like this. Because it's the shear motion of the material moving up and down. So we're going to do 20 times 4.5. I can do that. 20 by me, I mean Wolfram. Actually, I could probably do that in my head. It's 90. Is it going to be 90? I'm going to say it's 90. And then VP minus VS, which is 7.5 minus 4.5. So I'm going to do, ooh, that's going to be really convenient. So this is going to be 90 over 3, which equals 30 seconds, which is greater than 20 seconds, which is good, which means that the P waves didn't arrive instantaneously, which would have been awkward. Is that right? That seems right. OK. So now we're going to find out. We can find out either how far the S waves traveled or the P waves. Since they traveled the same distance, it doesn't matter. We can do either one. So I'm going to go back up to this formula right here because we got VP now. We now got this guy. We know he's 30. That guy is specifically not 30. It's 30 plus 20, which is 50? Yeah. All right. So they ask us the distance, right? Find the distance. Okay. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say that distance that the P wave traveled is. 7.5, because 7.5 kilometers per second, times 30, which equals 7.5 times 30. Oh, I can do that in my head. So we have 210 plus 15, which I'm going to call 225. All right? Now, I don't have to find DS, but I'm going to anyway, because if I get a different answer, then I know I messed up. I'm not trying to find that I messed up. Well, OK, I'm trying to find that I messed up. I just hope that I fail. Um, so VS is 4.5, and we know that TS is going to be, uh, I can't do it, 4.5 times 50. And if it comes out to 225, then I win. Bam! S-U-C-C-E-S-S. -S. That's the way you spell success. Bam, bam. All right, so it's going to be 225. So that is how you do it. Let me write this over here real quick. Not that it really matters because I'm just, you know, on the video here. Don't actually get credit for this. Well, you know, I get, you know, credit inside my soul, which is all that really matters. All right. So the idea with this guy is I had no idea what's going on here. I just drew down the facts that I knew. So I knew that P traveled this far. I knew that S traveled that far. There's a 20 second gap between them. I can, I then take that, take the knowledge that, all right, I know how far they traveled. I know the formula for traveling a distance. And then I just start plugging in numbers. And eventually, the math gave me some answer. And I made sure that the answer 30 seconds was bigger than 20 seconds. Because the total time traveled has to be bigger than the time, you know, time ahead that the P wave got ahead of the S wave. Otherwise, I would have been just weird. And then I checked to make sure that the distances were the same. So that was a, this, the second for finding DS was just a dummy check to make sure that we were on the right track. But yes, you ever want to sound smart at like a geology party and make them think that you're cool? Read up on underground nuclear weapon testing. Pretty awesome. You can even make up a story like, yeah, I used to intern with the IAEA and I, uh, we just, you know, investigated North Korea's underground nuclear weapons testing. You can make up a great story. I think you're amazing. Won't even have to be true, which are the best kind of stories. All right.
See you on problem two.